Paul. <laughs> Paul could not be here tonight, but no, he will be here a little later. He hopes to be here later. He was at a meeting or something. He couldn't miss it. So he asked me to convene the Fiddle Club of the World. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you know about Fiddle Club of the World, Paul started it like 11 years ago. And um, with the notion, you know, Paul's an ethnomusicologist, so with the idea that uh, appreciation of fiddle music went from all different countries and regions of the U.S., and, and we've had um, so many different wonderful people have come through Fiddle Club that he's brought people from all over the world, people from Mexico and Scandinavia, Austria, and of course all around the U.S. as well. And um, since about, I guess, like late last fall, he got this to be kind of a regular meeting. So it's the second Monday of every month, and we have a featured guest, and then we have a jam that everyone can take part in. Um, and so tonight, I'm just pleased to be able to present Ben Zorn. Um, <laughs> for six years. <laughs> uh, those of you who've been playing longer and don't play very well will be kind of amazed at that. But he was, he comes from a musical family. His dad, Eric, had played in Paul Squares and, and then he's, he also has played mandolin and guitar and uh, banjo a bit before that. But um, he won the Midwest uh, or no. second place, Midwest uh, Fiddle Championship in 2016. But that was 2016. He's come a long way since then. He's, well, I think what really made him blossom is when he came to the, um, went to school at Davis and Elkins College in West Virginia. And uh, many of you may know that that's the location of Augusta Heritage Center that has um, week-long camps, music camps, and they to, uh, maintain the traditions and culture of West Virginia music. And so, um, ben got to go for four years, and he, and not only that, but he auditioned and got into the Appalachian Ensemble, which is a touring group of, uh, of um, students and uh, musicians and dancers. So four musicians, right? And you play yeah, four musicians, uh, yeah. mostly fiddle, but also I, I play mostly fiddle. Uh, I started off playing mandolin, uh, and I play mostly fiddle and a little bit of banjo now. Uh huh. And I had the pleasure of seeing you guys when I was at Augusta a year or two ago. And, um, and he sings too, and uh, it's great. They're like really professional and great. And so, uh, you know, I'm really happy to hear you. Also, he's, he's uh, teaching this summer. He's uh, jamming around, but he's also teaching private fiddle and banjo. So um, uh, he's a good, patient teacher. I'm happy to learn some from you. So um, let's put our hands together for Ben Zorn.
This tune is called 9th of January. It's a bit like 8th of January, but it's like Bob Holt's version. And I guess they maybe even call it something else because it was it's different enough. But here's 9th of January.
pretty common tune called Duran's Hornpipe, but it comes from a North Carolina fiddler named Ozzy Hilton. Civil War, and uh, it's part of a collection of fiddle tunes called the Hamblin Collection that um, Chris Wig put together, and he made an album called uh, Fiddling on the Frontier, and it's called Shadwell Station. <laughs> Thank you. 
tunes that I learned for the Appalachian Ensemble a few years back. It's called Indiana oh. Woodchuck. It comes from Ed Haley. Thank you. 
that uh, Argo to College, Dana from Elkins, is also where they do Augusta every year. And I went and took fiddle, I took advanced fiddle at Augusta in 2016 from a fiddler from New York named Emily Shad, who taught me this tune. It's called Pretty Little Dog. <laughs> Thank you. 
Johnson, and it comes from Clark Kessinger. <laughs>
three Irish tunes that I play for the Ecologian Ensemble, and the tunes are called Rainy Day, Women of the House, and the last one is a new traditional tune called Season the Sword from Liz Carroll. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> so he has this beautiful bowing, it's so Thank fluid and, and, and fast, but all the note, you know, you hear it's like melodic. Yeah. Do you, have you worked on it? I like anything. Can you talk about your bowing? Uh, I think for, for a long time I felt like when it came to bowing, I just really didn't do my homework about it and just sort of let, it, let things happen where it felt like they should happen. Um, and then I started taking lessons from Jesse Mills, who I think is incredible and has amazing rhythm and amazing bowing. Uh -huh. And I, I was uh, playing a tune for him that I, he had taught me the last week, and he said, uh, you, you didn't really practice this much, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I, I, I practiced when I could, you know, being a busy college student, yeah. it's hard. And then he made a comment, like, you, you really don't have any rhythm in your playing. You need to... Oh, wow. <laughs> um, which, I mean, he, he was helpful in that regard. Uh -huh. um, he told me to play more than metronome, which I think was ultimately a, uh -huh. a helpful bit of advice, um, and then while uh, John Herman was doing yeah. a residency at the college, mm -hmm. uh, I took a lesson from him, and he, he, wasn't, he wasn't really so harsh about it, but <laughs> uh, he, he asked me how I work on my bowing, and I said, oh, I, just, I kind of do things how they feel natural, and he uh -huh. said, what you should do is uh, take a tune from a fiddler that you like, and try to pick it apart into like a bow and down bow, and, and you know, Really um, try to yeah, try to follow copy. as closely as you can. Maybe not an exact copy, but as yeah. closely as you can. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from both of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, well, we sure have read that. That's wonderful. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a non mute I'm not a musician. <laughs> but I just wanted to do every song end with moon. You know, <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, or am I just stupid, or what? No, I mean, it could end a variety of ways. That's, that's one of the ways, I think that's, I guess, how it felt right to conclude as a team. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll end something a different way. <laughs> you fade out. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on my fade out. <laughs> When you were uh, when you were like deciding to pick apart fiddlers, was there a specific fiddler that you went to first, or a specific tune that you went to first to learn the specific going? Um, I don't I don't remember specific tunes. Uh, definitely Jesse, actually, incidentally. Um, also Tessa Dillon, who uh, she's from Charleston, um, and plays a big possum. Uh, Reese Jones. Pick, pick parts of tunes of his. And um, there's a, from Missouri, Roger Netherton. You know Roger? Um, he actually has videos online that like, he'll play a tune, then he'll play it slowly, and then he'll explain all the bowing. So there's a tune, uh, an A tune called Lonesome John, where he does that, and I, I really liked how he built that one. So I, I actually just followed the video and, and played it exactly how he had to play it. And then does that, you start to just kind of incorporate that in your own playing eventually? Yeah, you, you um, pick up on some patterns uh -huh. and, and things that just um, work. Yes, yeah. some, some rhythmic things that uh -huh. you can incorporate in you know, many tunes, uh -huh. not just the one. Right, right, right. Anyone else? Oh, got a couple back here. So, <clears throat> I know at old time there's not a whole lot of improvisation going on, but you know there are a lot of tunes like Porky Deer where it's totally a crossover. And so, are you? Do you improvise much? Do you sit in on bluegrass jams and improvise <coughs> those tunes to try to change it up the second, or third yeah. time around? You know, or can you take it home? So, if so, yeah. I think you, what's your process? Yeah. Uh, it really depends on who I'm playing with, because sometimes I will improvise a lot. Yeah. Um, a lot of like, dedicated old time jams don't, yeah. people don't really improvise much because it's hard to really come through when all the fiddlers are playing melody. And, like, yeah. um, but like, with Fork of Deer in particular, I I kind of took the way several people played that tune and, and tried to like make it an amalgamation of different, how different fiddlers played it and sort of make it my own. So there was some, I guess not improvising, but some, some of my own discretion in how it's played. Is there another one? Oh, yes. Just like the other gentleman over there, I can't play a lick of any music, and I'm very impressed for what I think. Yeah. Um, but how, what made you pick this type of genre? Out of all the different genres oh, out yeah. there to be playing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What, 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 
moves you to yeah, play this type of film. Yeah, well, the strange thing about old time is that it's not so much of a genre as it is, because um, you can't like do an old time cover of a, of like a pop song. I think it would be uh, fall more into bluegrasses, you know, the, the realm of bluegrass. Uh, what, what makes old time special to me, at least, is the is the community, um, and then just the the way people play music socially and in, in social settings it makes I think it makes old time unique. It's very much it's not so much about this kind of thing where it's like a performer and an audience, and, and most time most of the time in old time is happening. It's everybody is invited to participate, and you know I, I like that idea where you know. Everybody can contribute something, whether it's just, you know, like stomping your feet or you're playing the spoons or you know the history of dance going along with it. That's supposed to like it's it's the dance is there for the sound, not necessarily for the what you're dancing. So yeah, it's, I think that's what I like about it a lot. Aside from it's, you know growing up with it, um, it's knowing a lot of people who are involved with it. It's the, the community of people that really really brought the old time. Because your dad is yeah. doing it, and yeah. your mom dancing. Yeah. And I also, I also play, I play a lot of like folk music, and I play a lot of bluegrass too. Yeah. Yeah. How did you decide to go to the region where you go to college instead of New England or Canada? Oh yeah. Why um, did you decide West Virginia? Ultimately, it, it came down to I wanted to try something new and, and be adventurous, and they were offering me a scholarship to be in some band. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I'd, I'd say it worked out really well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play in cross tuning mostly, or uh, I, I like play since it's by round peak area? I, I used to be I used to play in cross a lot, uh, except I realized that I was like going through so many bridges and I have to get my bridge replaced a lot. Um, it's really not it's not easy on the instrument, and I realized that this instrument is something that's really special to me. And I, I you know I, I, I try playing as many fiddles as I can, but I haven't really played one that I like as much as this one. So I just I want to be nice to it and be gentle to it. I only tune it to cross when I really feel like it's necessary. So cross tuning for people who don't know that you change the string, you change to different tuning, so it can be hard on the yeah. instrument, the bridge, like the moves and stuff. Anyone else? Okay, well, thanks so much. Thank you so much.